Hey friends, welcome back to another lesson on art journaling. This week we're going to be talking all about magazines and several ways you can use them in your art journal to do fun things like this. to jump right in with you to start creating with magazines in our journals. Grab some magazines, scrap mail. We get often get these flyers that you might not use, but it's a store promoting something. Grab something like that, some scissors, glue, and we'll get started. The first way that you can use magazines in your art journal is to just find phrases, words, quotes that you love. So I love this beyond words because sometimes there's so much more than we say. I found this article in Magnolia Journal, Finding Meaning in the Mundane, and it really spoke to me with the days we're living at home right now with this virus. I wanted to capture it. You can either cut out your words or you can rip them. There's different ways to get capture the words out of magazines and get them into your journals. Here's a sample of two pages that have a base coat and now it has words on it. And I'll probably go back and do more doodles or something here. So if you've been doodling or creating base coats, remember you can always be going back and forth to your other pages and adding more. So this page already has the base coat in the magazine, so I'll probably do doodles or something else on top, but I'm gonna find a page now that I would like to add more words to. Here's two pages that have a pretty base coat full of color. So I'm gonna add some magazine clippings of words that are speaking to me it to incorporate into this picture. I just cut out three words, phrases that were kind of standing out to me. This one I ripped here and I love what it says. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. That just kind of spoke to me so I wanted to capture it. These I cut out with scissors around a shape and this one I cut closer to just the actual phrase. So you can play with how you cut your words out and how you glue them in, but I love the mix of words that are speaking to you on colorful, powerful backgrounds. Another tip you can use with your magazine is sometimes you just see prints that you like, but you might not know how to incorporate those shapes that they're on into your magazine. Sometimes you can just use those prints to cut out letters to then glue into your art journal. I am going to add some letters onto this base coat. If you're like me, you might have some home decor magazines that you're subscribed to. This um, page really spoke to me because of all the different patterns. I can cut out letters out of each one of these to kind of spell something that's speaking to me and then capture using those prints in my art journal. spelled out the word home and I am going to write and doodle later up here safe at home and I'm going to glue these down now and it will always remind me of this season where we are at home so feel free to cut out words that are speaking to you your art journal is a safe fun kind of diary that captures your life in a fun, creative way. Now, if you don't feel comfortable just kind of taking your scissors and going for it with cutting out your letters, you could first draw your letters on the, on the magazine and then you've kind of created a stencil that you could cut around. That is one way to also cut out letters as you can see, this is not perfect. My letters are a little too big, so I had to overlap them a little bit to get them all here. But remember, we're enjoying it for the process, and so just have fun with it. 
If it really bothers you, you could find another rug or pattern that you didn't use and cut out another one. But me, I love this. I think it's fun. Maybe I'll outline it some. I don't know, I'll see when I'm doodling if I just wanna say safe at home and or if I wanna go ahead and outline my letters as well. Another idea you can use the magazines for is to just cut out a lot of things that are inspiring you. People will call these idea boards, uh, inspiration, and sometimes people hang them in their house. So I have a lot of home decor design magazines, so that is kind of what I've captured here. But if you have sports magazines, or maybe you have National Geographics or animals, you can cut out inspiration from those magazines as well to create kind of a themed page. So I'm gonna flip through this magazine and find some themes that stand out to me that I want might add into my journal. Families, if you are doing this together, you could use this as a conversational piece. So maybe you make a theme around goals you want to achieve this year. Kids, you could create one about who you wanna be when you grow up. You could use this kind of themed pages to be a good conversational piece of getting to know one another and have fun creating. All right, now I have a stack of magazines of things that I like and I'm gonna start cutting them out and kind of playing with how they may lay in my art journal. Now that I have cut out some things that were standing out to me and glued them into my journal, I'm gonna go ahead and doodle some around it so you can see how I was envisioning it. Okay, that was so fun. I loved these canisters, they were super colorful. Then I loved this pot, this door, this look for this house. These cardboard boxes, this often looks like our garage with our art studio closed. We've been ordering some supplies online, so we have a stack of boxes often in our garage that looks something like this. And then I thought, why not make it beautiful because you can make it into flower pots. So kind of took those images and kind of went off of it in making it flower pots or vases and just kind of having fun with it. For our last tip that I wanna show you today is how you can kind of create a scene with something from a magazine. So for this example, I saw this owl and loved him. So I cut him out and then I just had fun with creating a scene around him. So there's a branch with leaves. You don't have to have the realistic colors. You know, this kind of creates the scene that he's in a woods, trees, have fun playing with it, being creative. Elephants are my favorite animals, so I, of course, wanna do something with this. So I'm gonna do something similar like I did with the owl. For some of you that might be more black and white, you might have fun doing something like that with an animal and creating something realistic with branches for the background. But I also wanna show you another fun way just to kind of be out of the box and free-spirited and kind of create like a Picasso type of look with images from a magazine. I've captured one of my favorite animals in my art journal, and I'll probably go back and write a quote right here or doodle some zen tangles, just pattern designs behind him. These flowers I ripped out earlier on a page that stuck out to me, and so what a great time to now kind of capture that by cutting them out to look like grasslands. 
Now for the more Picasso kind of idea is you can go through and find one thing. You got families, you could play this as like a game where everyone picks a different kind of body part and it builds on one another. So here I'm going to cut out this mouth snout from this animal and then it's like a challenge that I have to go find something else to use for his eyes to kind of create a face. Have fun with it. You can make it a game. Everyone could do their own but just kind of see what kind of fun kind of abstract character you can create. I just finished up my fun little Picasso face. And as you can see, that mouth was what inspired me. But off of him, I grabbed an eye from a panda, a clock for another eyeball. So have fun with it. You can even play a guessing game with your family on um, what items you used and what kind of, where you found them and what kind of body parts you made them to be. But here I got two rainbows off a bath mat. So I loved how that kind of, kind of centered and made him have some ears. Now he kind of looks like a monkey or something, but those were his ears. And then down here, I used some utensils just to kind of give him some hair, like a goatee look coming off of his face. So, you know, you can kind of tell it's a face, but then it's real abstract and fun. I might go back again and add some doodles. I want to show how to quickly use some paint. We haven't used paint in a couple weeks, so have fun. We've been doing base coats, but then as you can add layers, you could easily stamp some circles onto your pages as well. I'm gonna use some acrylic paint. You can use acrylic paint, temper paint, whatever kind of paint you may have, and just pour it on a plate like we did with our base coats. I've collected some recycled materials from our recycling can, just different size circles. So here's a paper towel roll, here's the top of a water bottle lid, and here's a straw. These, when used as a stamp, they're gonna kind of create different size circles into my journal. So I'm gonna start with this lid kind of stamp some circles. I love the subtle pop of color, but it's again just another fun layer to play around with. You might remember we talked about this fish and I could create something behind him when we were talking about adding sentimental items into your art journal. Now it kind of looks like bubbles, so that's very fun. The straw will leave a little bit smaller circle. And then I'm gonna use the toilet paper tube and I think I'm gonna switch colors for him. And go over here. That was so fun. I just added some bigger circles to my abstract Picasso face and now he kind of looks more like a lion. So have fun with it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Please enjoy it for the process. I have a happy mess here and I kind of want to keep creating, so I probably will. One of my absolute favorite things is to see your pages and how you take these ideas and personalize them to you. Please take some pictures as you're creating. Share it on social media. Tag us so we can see them. And we'll see you next week.